Good morning and welcome to Rose Red Homestead. And thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. We appreciate you so very much. We have the best community. I just marvel sometimes at the things that Jim and I learn, at the things everyone shares with each other, the kindness that is on our channel. And um, we just appreciate the fact that we are a growing community of people who care a lot about the things that we focus on, which is emergency preparedness, food security, and self-reliance. I'm always on the lookout for articles or uh, new developments in the food industry that I think will be helpful to our community. And I happened across an article that fits right in with some of the things that we've been doing lately, and that would be nutrient-dense foods. I'm in the very last stages of working on our nutrient-dense meal book, and um, Jim is going to be doing the editing. Jim is such a fine editor. I just, I learned that about him shortly after we were married and we were both in our PhD programs in Wyoming. And I was getting ready for my dissertation and searching for an editor and Jim said, well, I can do it. And I thought, oh my gosh, I love him, but do I trust him as an editor? So I did and it was remarkable. He was fantastic. My dissertation won an award in the college as the best dissertation and I was very honored to receive that, but it was largely because of the editing work that Jim did that clarified everything. And he edits every one of our cookbooks, so uh, it's almost time for him to do his thing, and so we're really excited it should be out, we hope, in a couple of weeks. In any case, the title of this article caught my eye, and it was Healthy Canned Goods You Should Stock Your Pantry With. And so I looked at it and it looked pretty interesting. So I have those seven foods right here. And, um, you know, we do a lot with planning ahead of time, with planning menus and meals. And my sister Cindy and I have published that wonderful book on food storage that many of you have purchased. And thank you very much for those of you that have purchased that book. That was a lot, a lot of work, and it was built on Cindy's 30 years experience and how she organizes her food storage. And it, it's a brilliant idea and very adaptable to whatever anyone's individual circumstances are. So when we shop, we shop for meals and menus, but there are also times when I see something that might be on sale that I think now that would be a good thing to have in our food storage, and then I can work it in as necessary. And of course, our mantra is store what you eat and eat what you store. And so cycling through, rotating through these foods is also very important. This article, it was written by registered dietitians and it gives a lot of the reasoning behind why they selected these seven foods. So here they are. And I'll just run through them really quickly. But I have made a mental note of these seven things that everywhere we go, whether it's the dollar store, whether it is our drugstore, which is Walgreens, and they now have a food um, aisle, um, and it's beyond potato chips and nuts. They do have some canned goods and some cereals, and, and in their refrigeration area, they have milk and a few things like that. Um, dollar store rotates through inventory all the time. Last time we were there, I noticed some pineapple. And so stocking up and being um, taking advantage of wherever you are when you see things on sale is also part of being self-reliant. So the first thing, and I'm giving you the order that they gave them, um, black beans were there first. And uh, canned black beans are great. Also, I home can black beans. One of the reasons uh, that they are so healthy and I use in my new book, I have several recipes that call for black beans, is that a half a cup of these black beans have eight grams of protein. And that is really, really good. They are also very high in fiber. And if you buy them canned, you're gonna want to drain and rinse them to get some of the salt off. I don't add salt to mine, I add salt at the table. So watch for black beans and when you find them on sale, snap some up and put them on your pantry shelf. Another one is peaches. I've canned peaches all of my life, but they make a pretty good um, case for buying canned peaches as well. Um, f first of all, peaches are picked at their peak of ripe ripeness, as are the tomatoes that we will visit next. 
These have antioxidants in them, very similar to berries. Berries are touted all the time because of the level of antioxidants that are there. Well, peaches have almost the same thing. And you can buy peaches in heavy syrup, the way these are. You can buy them in light syrup. Um, you can um, use the syrup for other things like putting on pancakes or putting over ice cream. It contains um, fiber, also very low in calories, and um, also related to peaches in terms of nutrient density are pineapple and mandarin oranges. So those are a couple of more in the fruit category that we could add to our pantry when we find them on sale. Next is tomatoes, and I don't know about you, but I go through an awful lot of tomatoes. I buy canned tomatoes in a lot of different varieties. And then when I am able, I do my own canning of tomatoes. These are crushed tomatoes. These are petite diced tomatoes with sweet onion. There are lots of different ways. And these are tomatoes are picked at the peak of righteous, righteousness. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. <laughs> oh. Uh, they are picked at the peak of ripeness. There we go. They're very high in vitamin C and liposine, which is a carotenoid. They're low in calories. Um, some of the medical information about tomatoes says that it, it, they um, ease inflammation, they boost the immune system, they lower cholesterol, and um, they reduce the risk of heart disease. And of course, many, many uses for tomatoes. So we stock up on tomatoes. Now, one of the surprises for me was canned pumpkin. And I was whew, so relieved because, oh, I guess about three or four months ago, <laughs> Jim just cracks me up. <laughs> Jim is a great shopper. And he came home from the store. He said, I got a great sale. You won't believe what I got. And he walked in with about 50 cans of canned pumpkin that he got 10 for a dollar. And it was great. Yes, this price was right on that. But we now have enough pumpkin, canned pumpkin to choke a horse. And so I've been looking up recipes to uh, use pumpkin in. And pumpkin is very surprising. It is indeed very nutrient dense. It's high in vitamins A and C and E, high in fiber. And it also is high in pectin and high in beta carotene, um, helps lower blood pressure, aids in digestion and immune, immune system report. And it can be used as a substitute for butter in baking. And I had no clue. I just made these muffins yesterday as part of our um, new book. And these are pumpkin pecan muffins. And um, the muffins in the book are not overly sweet but they are very, very nutritious and they're, they're very good. And um, these have pumpkin and oats and of course pecans, no flour, no fat, no shortening, no butter, a couple of eggs, but it's mostly um, old fashioned oats and pumpkin. And they are really, really good. And that recipe will be of course in the new book. So pumpkin is very, very versatile and very dense in good nutrients. With salmon, which is next, um, we love fresh salmon. We do not live in a place, we're landlocked here, of course, in Southern Utah, and um, we don't have access to going down to the boats and getting fresh salmon the way you do on the coast. But canned salmon is also very, a very, very good alternative. It has the very same nutrition that fresh salmon does. Um, it's very high in vitamin D, and it is a great source of vitamin B12, which is good. And it is a wonderful source of protein. It's very high in potassium, which is a micronutrient. And um, then th there are so many good things about these oily fish uh, like salmon. And one of them is a reduced risk of heart disease, and they support weight loss, which is what some of us are really after. So salmon, this is some canned salmon, and this is my home canned salmon. It is, oh, it is so easy to can salmon. So we watch for salmon to be on sale whenever it is on sale at a couple of places, including Costco. And then we'll stock up, bring home a bunch, and I will can it. Because that's the way to preserve it. Uh, fresh 
salmon spoils pretty quickly. So. so another surprise for me was artichoke hearts. These come in these little jars. Also, they come in cans this size. And I have seen them at Costco in great big jars. I used to buy them that way. I haven't seen them at Costco lately. But um, I love artichokes in the first place. So I, I love to steam artichokes and then just pull off those leaves and eat them. I think they're wonderful. But these artichoke hearts are the very, the, the very center part of the artichoke itself. And um, I had no idea of the nutrition of these until I started reading more about them. I use artichoke hearts in one of the recipes in our new book. And it added such a fantastic flavor to that dish. Um, and it became one of Jim's and my favorite in the whole recipe book. But um, artichokes are high in complex carbs. That's what puts it in the category of high nutrient density. Also high in insulin, vitamin C, antioxidants, high in fiber, and low in calories. There's support for gut health with those um, artichoke hearts. Helps to combat fatigue. I really need to eat a jar of those every day so I won't feel so tired and then a reduced blood pressure and lower cholesterol. And they can be added to so many um, recipes. I usually use artichoke hearts for in salads, like in green salad. It adds a really wonderful taste for there as well. But um, using them in this recipe, it was for one of our um, evening meals that, oh my gosh, it was just really wonderful. Then last is garbanzo beans. And garbanzo beans or chickpeas are a favorite among those of us who are trying to monitor our weight and be very careful about the things that we eat. And so they're high in popularity right now for that reason. And almost every anything that is health-oriented includes garbanzo beans. And I went through our book just to see if I had used anything with chickpeas or garbanzo beans, and I didn't. So that was amazing to me to find that. They're high in protein. Uh, there are six grams in a cup compared in a half a cup compared to eight grams in a half a cup of black beans. Um, but they are high in healthy fat and high in fiber. They help control blood sugar, which is really a good thing, manage weight, support heart and gut health. And these, of course, are very, very, very versatile. And so those are the seven, the big seven. I'm going to be watching for these, especially at the dollar store and at the drug store where prices are a little bit reduced than in the grocery store. I'm also going to be watching for when they have case lot sales of things. Uh, and yes, I can my own beans a lot, but picking up a case of already canned beans on sale is a, a wonderful alternative to add to our food storage. So that's it for the seven nutrient-dense canned goods. And let's go on the hunt and start stocking up our pantries with, the, with these foods. Bottom line is you have to like it and we'll, be, we'll eat it. Don't stock up on stuff that you're not going to eat. So if you need to eliminate some, then just do it. But it is good to think about stocking up on foods like this that give us a lot of nutrition. So thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for sharing this information. Please subscribe if you haven't already. That way you'll get notified every time we put out a new video. And we will see you very soon with another video.